go to one crowd. It's like an it's like the our version of an inside joke, oh, right? Because okay. that's what everybody got used to. I mean, that's that all the old all the uh, the older players who played Dota One like still, you know, when they're mad at somebody on their team, they'll condescendingly say, "My blue player or my pink player." Okay. Well, fuck those old men. Those old players. <laughs> all right. That's yeah. No fuck old men. <laughs> That is, uh, that's how sugar daddies are created. Um, by fucking them. Well, okay. Well. <laughs> nice. That's how we're going to start the cast. I see. I, I, all right. I like how this is going. <laughs> um, Haz, you can't have more. You've already got enough pussy. Uh, Ten eight. seconds remaining. Like, yeah, easiest way to insult some, like, yeah, the closest you come to stroking pussy Five is in a, a pet store, stroking a cat. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, valid attempt, but no. <laughs> oh, God. Oof. Magnus. Yeah. The, see, the real reason you ban against Seeker is because you know that Yapsil is just going to use it to farm for himself. <laughs> I mean, the real reason that you ban is because Ice Frog is AFK or something, because I don't know how that hero didn't get nerfed. I mean, you've got an extra ban now. He got rid of Io. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So Magnus, Magnus is the new Io as far as bans go. All right, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. I, mean, I found it hilarious when I hopped into a pub game and someone picked Io. I was like, my god, this is the first person in a pub oh. game to pick Io? No tiny. In like five years. Alright, let's get ready to go live. Go live. All right. Five, four, three. Oh, wait, no, wait. Let's restart the call quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah, good idea. See, I'm right. smart. I have good ideas. All right, good let's go live. Five, Ten four, remaining. three. All right, folks, Five welcome back remaining. to the series. Ninja in Pajamas versus Team Secret. The Stockholm Major qualifiers. Team, Team Secret, Secret one game up after a pretty dominant performance. But, I mean, you mentioned it before we even went live, Haas. This hero was not banned. Uh, it is the most picked hero across all four regions of the qualifiers, all six regions, rather, of the qualifiers now so far. Tiny, 71 picks. He is 41 and 30. Uh, that's a clear 10 picks ahead of Earth Spirit and Juggernaut, who are next on the list. Much higher win rate as well. Uh, with the flex value that we've seen out of this hero, we know that you, a Yapsor four-position Tiny is always a threat. We know that mid one loves this hero in the mid lane, and it goes so well with uh, the role that he's being asked to play on this team this however is a surprise we are going to get to see uh i figure this is going to be probably a yapsor four position cm again and nip will go back to something that they displayed twice in their first series of the day they're going to go with that first phase chaos night oh, a 50 50 win rate for them today it did backfire in the second game 33 usually play on that chaos night and I think you might be right. This is likely a Yaps or CM, considering that Puppy doesn't like to play these type of heroes. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones that die. Remaining. He wants those big tanky boys, the strength heroes, the swall boys. Five oh, yeah. Remaining. Worth saying as well that uh, Chaos Knight's only, this is only the seventh time picked for Chaos Knight across all regions of the qualifiers, and it's the third by NIP, so... Uh, they're valuing this hero quite a bit more than other teams. The last few times that we saw it has been in the offline role played by 33. Uh, and again, kind of, you know, similar idea to what we we're talking about with the Doom and the Centaur, these tanky heroes that can build utility items, get in there in the fights. Yeah, it's a hero that has decent stat gain and gets real value out of his ultimate. There's not, like, don't get me wrong. If you can farm something like a heart on a Chaos Knight, you feel like a god. But at the same time, the ramp up for this type of hero, the type of items you want to build, fits this kind of space creator in the mid game more the, so than the late game carry that he used to be. Absolutely. And it and it also sort of overcomes one of the big weaknesses of the hero when he used to be played in that hard farming role. And that's that his he has a lack of a flash farming mechanic. So that if he falls behind, it's very hard for him to get back into the game by just hitting creeps. Well, the three position CK, his role is just going to be in the middle of these fights anyway. Turn to ban. 
take the ban out on the troll. I'll take her with the timber as well. Maybe going towards the jug. I think they're going towards the jug again. Like with that troll ban out, especially that that's one of the biggest bans we see made whenever someone wants to pick a juggernaut. Well, I'm 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 not unhappy with that, but again, it's I'm gonna say this over and over with Jug because I just think this is the key to the hero right now. Is you, you pick Jug because you think you can crush the lanes and, and turn that laning advantage into sustained pressure on the enemy side of the map. You are you are not picking Jug right now to fight toe to toe with any of the other big ad you carries. Uh gun the way the lifestealer does. Speaking oh, yeah. of ad you carries, something that this guy doesn't like as much. Do they go towards the Jug still? They could go for the Luna as well. That's another option. I believe they did run the Chaos Knight plus the Luna early today anyway. Hmm? Not terrible in this type of game, although there is that block potential that can occur due to the changed. Tiny. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, um, I think that makes this Tiny even more threatening with the possibility of uh, him getting an early Blink Dagger up and, and making the Infest Bombs work. There's also this lifestyle on, on the table. Do they just want to stop at the tiny for the means to get into a fight, or do they want something more reliable? Do you think as NIP, you go ahead and pick your other support here? And I think Shadow Demon is looking pretty good to me. It went pretty well. You can easily harass out the CM effectively. They go for the Bane, Bane's, though. Bane's sort of the other obvious, right? You need, you need a BKB breaking support. When when Life Stealer gets picked this early on, and Bane's sort of the other one that that fits that bill with the Fiend's grip. Also effective at trading, even with the tiny, you hit decently hard, and at the same time you have the brain sap to heal you up. So this should be rough if they do lay in the Bane up against the tiny. He should suffer. So more than likely at this rate, going to end up being a mid tiny. But at the same time, Secret have that flexibility. They do also have the temp pick. Absolutely. I would I would not be surprised to see a pivot toward um a Yapsor Tiny and a Puppy CM, although when when Team Secret last year, last March or so brought that back to the to the meta, the CM, it was in the four position. And I think this is this this Darks here pick I like a lot better because obviously it locks down a lane, but you also have you have solid lockdown from your crystal maiden and your tiny already on the board, so you're not you're not going to get punished for the lack of lockdown from your three position. At the same time, NIP can go back to an AM if they're looking for the lane encounter to the darks here. That's true. Uh, we said already, this chaos knight is not going to be your pos one or even your pos two. This is going to be a pos three, so they are very free and mobile with those picks. Then, in that case, if you pick up the AM. Team Secret are already kind of locked in this scenario where they're going to have to have a Dark Seal on the outer lane. There's no way you can put him in the mid. In which case, you are relying on dodging out the combo. Because I don't think there's any way to set up well against an AM right now. It's not bad with a Tiny, I guess. Still. Dark Seal is that type of hero. You pick him so he can farm effectively early on. Yeah. Now we are, and again, we, we, we shouldn't overlook the possibility of this chaos, chaos Knight sliding over to the one position either. Although, all right, okay, they are going to go ahead and, and pick that Juggernaut as you suggested. Uh, you know, we talked about the Bane being the BKB breaker on the side of NIP. There is no BKB way to deal with BKB on Secret, I guess, uh, I guess Toss. Um, they changed that, didn't they? I'm pretty sure yeah, that's anymore. right, that's right. Yeah. They did change that, okay. So, yeah, so that's gone. There's no option right now. Secret, what do they need? Most likely mm. a mid in this scenario. Not many you can get yeah, that but... can actually yes, spell immunity either. Exactly, exactly. This is where in other situations, you see a lot of teams get backed into picking Void fifth pick because they need a core, and they need a core that can deal with, that, with those BKBs with spell immunity, and Chronosphere is the obvious way. Well, you obviously can't really pick Void once you are once you have Lifestealer on board. Radiant team I don't think this is a Visage game either. I don't think they can run that in the mid. Like, maybe depending uh, on what no. Nip picks in the mid, but it's not great against these other heroes right now. I'm trying to think of something that actually ramps up and amplifies the damage output of the Lifestealer while giving additional control in the fight. 
fan of the Viper. Interesting. So what are they doing? Are they going to run like a... OD maybe? Yeah. I've already banned out the Razor. Five seconds remaining. I mean, are they going to do something cheesy like Huskar? Possibly. Because the problem is, if you go for like the Outward Devourer, you're in a lot of trouble when it comes to Chaos Knight. Because you're forced uh, yeah. to be KB, and even then, there's going to be a Fiend's Grip. Yes, they want to use it on the Lifestealer, but they won't hesitate for that mid-game to use it on the OD. Yeah, I think OD feels feels super risky. It, it it it's it's viable though. I can see. I can definitely see a world where they go for that. The, the, big, the, the big thing that I'm Drow seeing in this draft, right, is the big problem with the previous draft was that Secret just had this massive mobility advantage. Okay, that when you look at Doom and Razor as your cores, it's just too much. It, it, NIP is is too reliant at just at, at running at you, right? And you have these heroes in secret that you need to get in the back line and get on top of and control, like the Drow, even like when you talk about how it plays against the Doom, the Absor Rubik. And you, you definitely don't see the same kind of thing in this draft. I actually, maybe, okay, maybe Team Secret, what they do is they just forget about dealing with the BKB. You, just, you pick something like a puck with your last pick, and you just go full out aggression. Run the puck mid and, and, and get those infest bombs going early. If you can actually snipe out Nip's back line, they run out of a lot of kill potential, right? With the Bane Phoenix group being gone. And if they don't get the Ignis down, their team right. fight potential is kind of weak. All right, the puck to file pick. That gives them some early push aggression that, as well. And that also takes away. They banned the Husker and they picked the puck. Now, the two heroes that we were talking about, Husker and OD, they banned one of them and they picked the hard lane encounter to the other. Very nice. Nice tail into this draft here by Peter. And I just don't know that there's a pick here that that deals with what's on board for NIP and still gives Secret the same kind of mobility that they enjoyed in the previous draft. Maybe you just do ah, the that's not what I expected. Okay, no. one ember. I mean, I'm hyped for it. You know me, Haas. I love to see some ember. I was I, hesitant to even mention it though with the bane on the field. Oh, I he just gets ab I think he just gets abjectly crushed against this Pugna. Fata is, I mean, does Fata not just eat his lunch in this landing matchup? Maybe not. The changes to the slight fist mean you can get one value point now and easily regularly dodge out the Never Blast. That the might be the sign of factor. Sure. But you're still you're still dealing with the fact that Pugna is just this ridiculously high move speed range hero. You still well, he did get a slight nerf. Us. He got a slight nerf, remember. There was a that's true, that's true. five move speed reduction. I think there's going to be the, the crucial thing is going to be watch the first few waves. If mid one can actually be ahead on CS by the time they both get to level three, I think there's kill potential there. Um, but the problem is you're going to have to wait to tank and never blast and then activate the flame guard instantly, move forward for the Siren chains. Otherwise, you'll wait until level four where you have to decide if you want to go for two points in the chains or one in the slight with one in the chain. Yeah, I, I also like I like this game as as a test of secrets adaptability. Because we know how well that they've adjusted to this new play style where it's really Nisha getting the farming focus and mid one being more of the playmaker and space creator. But as the season goes on, and this is something that we saw with the secret roster last year, the good teams are going to adjust to that. They're going to make you play in different ways. And this is an example of a draft where they're going to have to give mid one a little bit more farm priority. Nisha is going to have to be be a little bit more active earlier yes i i know with what we've seen from life stealer so far in the qualifiers you don't necessarily want to say that because we've seen way too much of this you know midas radiance manta life stealer i i don't think you want to do that in this game no it has come at a cost you need heroes that can definitely guarantee you that space and oh this is the type of hero that can mid one his playstyle fits this and at the same time ember spirit is a hero designed right now to just function as kind of mid-game tempo control and aggression type carry. Maybe you can make someone happen. I'm just concerned about once PVD reaches 6. Like, this, this is a clear Fiend's Grip target. Yes, that means Nisha will be free to do what he wants, but that does also mean a very squishy hero is going to be locked in place for several seconds to be killed. Yeah. Well, you say that, but again... As we've said so often with Secret Draft, a lot is just going to depend on how much this four-position tiny in the hands of Yastro is going to get. Because if he gets a timely blink dagger, 
You know, which ER, I love Yapsar so much. He already has a queued up in his quick buy. I mean, uh, he knows what he wants. But th that that takes away a lot of the deficiencies that we're worried about from Secret. Already invaded. Oh, that's three heroes, guys. Yeah, three on three, actually. Die hanging around needs to be careful because, of course, he has leveled in the Iron Shell. Ace has the spin ready. Besides, again, so just going to harass him down a little bit. They'll back away. It'll be two runes apiece. No. All right, so are we going to... I wonder, are they going to stay in this tri v tri set here bottom? No, it looks like... I don't think so. You have to switch it Peter's off. Bane is already transitioning out. Like, Jug should and be able to sustain on his own. Just going to play chase. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that you pick Jug into Darkseer, right? Is that... You know, Jug not only does he has the, the have the healing wave, uh, healing ward against the ion shell, but with that ten more base agility, I mean, he can tank creep waves under tower. Die already stacking a lot of iron shells here, just trading damage where he can. Maybe not too effectively. His ace does get a good spin out. Illuminate blast actually clips on the Zai, gets him pretty low. Puppy forced to level in the frost by a level one. Usually, you want to try and get a point in the crystal nova, but. No choice in the matter. And meanwhile, Yapsor and, and Peter just sort of going back and forth down here in the Radiant Jungle as, as Yapsor has grabbed a full creep wave. Peter furiously trying to block. Uh, Not working out. Yapsor just turning around every once in a while like, hello, over here. But we, while we're talking about that, mid one has crushed the first couple of waves mid. He is even on CS with this Pugna. It's a good sign as well because you should actually easily be stopped in the first wave or two. You use the flame garden instantly, it'll be blasted out. And Dead. a lot of damage inflicted uh, by these two nip supports on their counterparts from Secret, making him pay for pulling this creep wave off. Yeah, PBD sticking with it. Meanwhile, Zai did try and cut the wave as well, but Ace says no to that. Him on the top, one on one scenario. Now, this should favor Nisha a bit, but not as much as people think due to the new Chaos Strike allowing you to sustain on health a little bit. And that is a Bane that just chased the two supports back under their own Tier 3 tower. I love how Peter is playing this lane early on. I'll focus on getting the XP early on, just making sure he keeps up the aggression. Of course, Bane, one of the most effective heroes at level 1 brawling. He won the land of 33. Him and Nisha are getting so low, and... The difference here is 33, 33 needs to watch out regen. because Yapsor and Puppy are rotating up to this top lane outside of Vision. If he comes forward to get this creep wave, he is probably going to die. Good game sense there. He backs away. It reveals what they were trying to plan there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the Corey just got sniped out. PPD, he was waiting for it. Now mid one might go down here. First blood drawn. Yeah. Problematic there, getting caught out in such an awkward way. He tried to pull away from the creep wave, and we talked about this level three power spike, but you're a level behind now. And this is where wow. Fada gets his advantage on the Pugna. Yeah, I mean, he traded it effectively. No, no, he, it's his courier that ends up getting sniped. So yeah, that, okay. Oof. Yeah, Oof. no. So PBD was waiting behind the, uh, behind the tower. And they'll finally find and kill off the Bane, punish him for these movements around the map. One, just trying to aggress a little bit, trying to force some regen out of Fada, knowing that he doesn't have core usage anymore. Means that he has to try and get as much value out of trading as he can. Yeah, look at Yapsor here lying in wait and Fada. Uh, NIP has been ready for the secret rotations in this game. Spoil them all out. Better in the early game. And it just feels like Secret weren't quite ready for the moves that Peter's made up to this point so far because this has yeah. been an oddly aggressive roaming Bane. Still level one, by the way. No, he's just spent oh, all the time on the dire side of the map. Farter? Can they touch him? The yep, Absol's getting close. It looks like he's a little bit too far away, though. 3 3 4 movement speed over 3 3 3. And one of them has boots. No points for guessing which. Hey, look, Peter's arrived in the mid lane finally. Yeah. And. <laughs> And now we have the usually 3v3 mid with 1v1 on both the sidelines. Sure, of course. Meanwhile, the top is proving as hilarious as ever. This time, though, 33 starting to win the exchanges. As he levels more into that Chaos Strike, he'll be able to sustain himself better in this lane. Then all of a sudden, Nisha should be at a disadvantage. Yeah, everybody's farming here, but the side of NIP is starting to open a bit of a gap. Say a bit. We're four and a half minutes in. It's a 2k net worth lead right now. Yeah, that that's that's getting concerning. It's pretty substantial at this stage of the game. And oh, uh, mid one. 
Oh, he mistimed it. Ooh. The slight fist dodge was not there, and that hurt. Finally has the courier back up and ready. Coming across now. Meanwhile, Zai yeah. does Catch fall in the bot lane, and they're jumping to the top, looking for a kill. Nisha getting low. 33. He's scouting. He's got his abilities at the ready. He'll turn around with the Yapsil. The big crit comes out. Oh. They toss over onto the tower. They think that they can get a kill on the PBD. And Nisha living life on the edge. Will go down to the right clicks of Bane before falling himself. 33. He's the true champion in this fight as he kills off Yapsil as well. Wow, advantage NIP all around, and all of a sudden that, that net worth advantage that you talked about balloons to 3k. Oh, 4k. <laughs> it's getting even higher. Oh, boy. Every second you look. Yeah, this is time for the runes. Some... Keep in mind, Nip got all four runes there. So NIP, yeah. they are looking pretty dominant right now. Now, mid one is going to reach level six soon. That's a huge power spike for the side of Secret. It's whether he can make something happen at this rate, and... All right, okay. things are I'll happening. Take that. Saxa. I'll take that. Odd for him to get caught out like that. Well, probably the fastest hero in the game by base. And they're chasing on the tower. TP's coming in right now. Saxa oh, cancels it cancel. in the end. He can't risk it. He knows if he goes straight in, there's going to be an avalanche toss back into the iron shell. Puppy coming in on top here. 33 under a little bit of threat, but... Yeah. He, 33 he, he, does he, get the life steal off before moving away, which is crucial to stay alive there. Yeah. Yeah, he's got three points in that chaos strike. That's a lot of sustain. Exactly. This is the thing that we were talking about. Like, with the new changes to Chaos Knight, he might not be this crazy, ridiculous right but carry anymore at the moment. But what he does have is a lot of sustain, which, especially with the changes to Vlad's and the removal of headdress being needed, is something that a lot of new off lanes are looking mid towards. Mid one. Oh, he's going to get low. They don't finish him off, though. Salve's up. I look to turn around here, but he still doesn't have level six. Yeah, you know, just pressure on the crap out of this Ember Spirit. And so far, he is getting no room for a ball. Uh, again, it's it's seven kills at the seven minute mark. It's been a lot of action in the early game with, with a lot of exchanges that haven't led to kills on top. But by far the most significant part is just this giant economy advantage that, that NIP has be been able to amass. And that's not all the bounty runes. Oh, no, indeed it's not. They found... Decent amount of farm. 33 is the poorest farm in one right now, and he's matching Nietzsche, just to put it in perspective right now. Dark's here, the worst off of the secret bunch when it comes to the cause. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at the open wounds, right? Yeah. Nietzsche has to use the infest just to make sure he's in a formidable location because he knows the phantasm is available for 33. Well, and, and secret looking like they wanted to set up a play behind the Ember Spirit mid, but he's forced Zai. back to base there. Uh, Zai? Almost goes down here. Ace is diving. He wants the Omni Slashes if need be. There's an Illuminate being charged up, and Zai doesn't realize it. Saxa gets the Man. kill, barely clipping it. Yeah, that's the second time that Zai's died to just getting clipped by Illuminate here in the early game. It's tough. Noxia, not a hero that really aims to play from behind. It's just meant to be this safe farmer. Ah, uh, they going for it. it tiny. Okay. Under his own tier one. And Fada hadn't even reached yet for the rotation there. There was no decrepit fire. There was no life drain. That was just a dive. Boy, oh boy. You have to look forward and Secret question. Is getting pushed back across the map. You have to look forward, though, and question what do they do? Because Nisha is not going to be ready to fight anytime soon. And he's kept busy at all times by 33. Well, what they do is right now Ember with a DD rune, right? He's got to make something happen down here, but... You mentioned it, right? They're, a lot of their playmaking potential is wrapped up in this Ember Spirit, and they, he's been pressured so effectively. Very true. And you always have that issue that, actually, unless there's a creep wave nearby, Ember can't really go for the play. And now Phantas in the top lane, 33. He's going to try and make Poppy pay for this. Has to back away, though. As the open wounds come out. They finally managed to kill him off. Chaos Knight might be in trouble. He should chase oh, him, no. but there's the Chaos Strike again. Keeps 33 nice and healthy. Almost impossible to blow through this guy. Yeah, the mid one, while we're saying that, loses his tower mid. Not surprising to Fata, but Fata is going to TP back, going to walk back to base here and like more than likely TP out, try to make a play. I'm going to TP for 25 yeah, seconds, the, so it'll be a long wait. You see the line drawn from Peter. They know where they want to be. Mid one, meanwhile, just continue to farm up the mid lane. He's heading towards the boost to travel. Still got a long way to go, though. I think I think 
NIP are going to run the same play that they ran at five minutes. They're going to try and put themselves in position to pressure and claim all the bounties again. I'm not sure if you can contest it either. Well, you might oh, find well, this kill. Avalanche right. toss out in the sacks up, but that's the blind of light. A little bit too tanky. Right oh, it's not. It's not the powerhouse tiny. This is level five tiny. At Ten minute mark. Didn't hit that hard. Nisha is trying to get across the runes. Buddy free will stun him up. Don't worry, they're chasing in on PPD. The Avalanche gonna come out. The Illuminate is being charged up. We'll hit the Pompey. They turn around, they didn't brain sap him. No, they nightmare instead. A little bit of a mistake from PPD. They'll still find the kill afterwards, but not before Peter goes down. 33 needs to be careful because oh, mid one is here. Beefy. Yep, and there's the Ignis being dropped as well. Sax is gonna use the blind and light to ensure they can't chase. They are still staring at the pretty ball. At least get 100 gold for mid one. So getting ever closer. He's gonna pick up a bottle instead of going straight for the bots. Yeah, and they, and they split the bounty runes too. Secret anticipating the play that NIP were going to try to run there around the 10 minute mark and, and preventing that net worth differential from getting out of control. Well, big win is getting that Ignis on the sideline as well. Yep. Nisha once again infesting just to make sure he's healthy. Mid one is moving right now. Remnants across, looking for 33. Flame guard up. He needs to be careful and quick. Yeah, look at the TPs. Rainbow TPs have been initiated. Only Fada will arrive. And mid one will be able to remnant dodge away. Need more on the bot lane. Oh, they make a play. Well, Poppy's just learned that snow, but Ace doesn't give a damn. He's going to spin, try and move away. The Iron Shell's doing decent damage. Have they got the right clicks? No, they haven't. Oh, it's close. Zai just out of range. I think the Surge maybe was just still on cooldown by a second. Not able to commit his own 75 damage right click, which would have surely killed off Ace. Uh, you, you, you just, you got a question, right? We talked about it a lot during the draft, but Secret really has nothing to deal with spell immunity. And this Jug is going to be able to just be on lanes by himself, split pushing, split farming. Uh, and you're very limited in your ability to punish him. And then you just play around the Chaos Knight plus the Pogna that are already ready to fight. And I, I don't think when they picked this lifesteal that they were planning on having Nisha go Midas in this game. I really don't. But he's recognizing mid one's getting, getting super pressured here. Yeah, you know, he's. Mm, it's, it's tough. This is very tough. Dyer's top tower has no easy solution right now. Uh, River, PPD does get the nightmare out as he gets hit up by the avalanche. He'll be fine. Should be a continued push by Father in the top lane though, and you just equal that out with a push in the bot lane by Ace as well. So you get something no matter where it is. You'll gain a tower kill at least. Or will you? Mid one's moving in. He's got the iron shell as well. They've added all the damage they can to help him get this kill. There it is. Flame guard comes out with the searing chains and Fada, you're not escaping that one alive. Oh, he needed that so badly. Yeah, he TP'd, TP'd from mid to his own shrine to set up that kill with the TP in to the top tier two as well. Counts for something. And now mid one's heading towards the blink dagger next. Instead of the boost of travel, taking this in a different direction. Well, he knows. Again, they've they've kind of sort. Of, I I still do believe that when they when they formulated this draft, that they had in mind Nisha being a little bit more of a space creator in this one and giving mid one a bit more farm. But the way the game is gone, uh, their their hopes are very much on the back of Nisha now, and mid one needs to be the one moving around. That's the thing. Like uh, I've seen this bling dagger a few times. Typically, you go into it when you're feeling pressured. You need to mobilize, right? Because the big kind of thing for mid one on this end ball. Ember more so than the Nerf Spirit because there's so many remnants is the lack of mobility once they're down and no mobility for Zai as he gets Fiends gripped in the bot lane. Yeah, they converted that kill pretty easily. There's not much Zai can do with three heroes including the grip in position. It should be a tier one tower that got left just outside of deny range. But he will be able to convert it nonetheless. Secret not in a position to stop this. Mid one does almost have that blink dagger now. But he's been using the flame guard to farm, which means he can't use it to kill. And 33 with a minus as well onto his CK. And he says, anything you can do, I can do, well, at least as well, if not better. I think it makes a lot of sense. Again, this, the CK in this particular, the CK in this role is a lot less item dependent than he would be as a safe laner. Yeah, he can afford to go minus here. Just needs to get those points up into the phantasm. Everybody kind of... Everybody kind of pivoting back, recognizing that this this game is becoming more and more likely to go late as mid one switches it up and does go boots to travel his first item. 
will allow him to split push keep the lanes pushed out because you are running out of ground you've lost all your tier ones now and you've claimed nothing from the side of nip something has to change soon nisha is at least going towards that desolated build as opposed to the big fat radiance which i think is the right move i think the radiance is too long to wait before you can have an impact at all and ember is so strong in the mid game even without items yeah. you need to utilize it yeah i like this adjustment a lot nisha Let's use the rage pretty early. PPD's been seen to protect by the decrepit fight. Doesn't matter though. Slow down with the open wounds. He can throw out a nightmare, but it's a little bit too late. He's not going to live. Ignis does get dropped, and Ember does get locked in as well. It's going to move forward with the remnant. Wants to finish off Searing Chains through. Although he maybe is in a little trouble. Tries to remnant away, but gets dragged straight back in. And 33 will begin the crits. Nice vacuum. Holds him in place. Still a lot of phantasm, but now Avalanche comes in to toss through as well. And will you build oh, a snowman? Puppy. Will you puppy with a big ultimate? Yapsel will melt the life drain, but they're chasing on through Fada. We'll go down next. They'll find him Omni Slash committed just to kill off the Crystal Maiden. <laughs> that is the dire straight of that new freezing build with a plus 10 armor. He couldn't do the damage. They're going to chase forward looking for more. Mid one. You ready to go? Fiend Script's going to come out. They need to interrupt it. But guess what? Searing Chains doesn't do that anymore. Illuminate Blast through. We'll get Nisha low. He should pop. But no. He gets in the creep. Moves away with the feast. He'll be able to get out with the surge. Oh, Nisha. Stays Plus alive. Health. And mid one. He's looking to get aggressive here. Oh, Searing Chains do come out. Are they getting ace? For the healing ward. They might get ace. He's getting pretty low right now. He's not going to be protected. Going to try and go for the spin away. Mid one does throw out the remnant a little bit too early. If he held that, maybe you still find the kill. But they were reluctant, especially with Fada respawning and TPing to the mid. Man, there's your ultimate enemy betrayal right there with uh, Ace throwing out the soul Omni Slash on his former captain, <laughs> finally getting rid of that freezing field. But yeah, as you mentioned, that buff to the hero feels super substantial, especially at early levels. There's a lot of armor to work with. Yeah, well, you, it, 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 that's the thing, right? You, you used to not even need the stunner. When, when CM channeled, you just want, you just walked up and killed her. Now you actually do need to disable to stop that freezing field. And then when you look at it from that perspective, only two heroes have easily accessible stuns, the Bane and the Chaos Knight. It's too right. big of an investment for Coddle. He has to throw down an Ignis if he wants to stun. Well, he wants to throw down Ignis. He's actually heading straight for the refresh next. Just the typical life of a Keeper of the Light player right now. Not too much diversification of build. Oh, yeah. 33. Everybody, everybody watching GH and Yapsor. Open wounds out. Toss up and down. Chaos Knight knows he's dead. He just uses his stun to farm a creep. That'll be a tough fall. And they commit the ice, uh, the, the ice wall. The wall as well, rather. Yeah, that, that Crimson Guard is going to, by Zai, is potentially going to make a big difference in these fights, too. That makes the CK illusions feel a lot less scary, especially on the supports. Same with the Juggernaut. Now, that, we'll look at it the correct way, Haas. Freeze Field plus Crimson Guard. Puppy's the tankiest hero in the team. Huh. Pick up a casual bracer, you never die him. I mean, we, we talked about Puppy and his run at you heroes, but he's sitting there on a, he's sitting there on a level 10 CM with Tranks. Why not? Let's not forget, this guy's probably got a Buckler. Has he got a Buckler coming out now? Oh, Yapsor here, setting up the play on the top lane. Potentially, he's got Life Sealer inside of him, but just can't quite find the opening with that blink. Not they give up. He just says, go back to farming. Which is unfortunate, considering who just came across to a camp. And they know about it as well, because they have a ward down, but they can't make the jump. They're too paranoid about Bane standing behind him babysitting. Yep. Oh, mid one and Zai just farming around the mid area. The wave isn't here, so they can't push for the tower. They're just trying to free up room on the map so that Nisha can farm more safely in the jungle. As you'd expect from an Ember Spirit player. Who is going for the Blink Dagger next? Now that he's got the boost to travel. He might actually find a kill here on the Saxa if he wants to die. If he has got a DD as well. Problem is they know. They've got a ward down and Fado is close by. It should, come, it should become obvious there, actually. Yeah, I thought I thought he might switch things up, but with the way the heroes played now, Ember's oh, more about the damage, engagement top. They oh, find wow. PPD, and now they're going to hunt for Ace as well. He's got the Omni Slash, but he doesn't want to throw it out on Nisha. And they do oh. not want to pursue him. That didn't take long. Don't blink, or you might miss Peter dying. If you're someone who spams NA pub games at a high level in the past few years and has felt the wrath of his supporting Phoenixes, you probably feel good about the way he's dying right now. 
Hey, screwed up. Avalanche comes out, forces out the spin. Nishi decides against pursuing any further. No opportunity there for them. Yeah. I mean, even if you get that toss before you can use the spin, I don't think you kill him either. A little well, bit too hard right now. They're doubling down here on this move on to Ace. Uh, they're going to have all five heroes up here. They are hunting. We've got the infest bomb at the ready. But there's the wall going down. Right. Slows down Ace. Well. Decent amount. Forces out the spin. His team is behind him, though. Just in time for the runes. They move forward. PBD does find one, but there's the avalanche. They can toss forward and finish him off. As they infest bomb out. Use the nightmare to buy a little bit of time, but not enough. They want this tier one, and they might be able to find it now. They're set up in such a position. There's no real easy way for NIP to interrupt it. Yep. Three out of four bounty runes, too, off the back of that. That's not, it's not bad. It's a lot of commitment from Secret, and Yapsor had spent a lot of his time in the top jungles just for two Bane kills, but you know, they're going to get some economic oh. damage out of it. Oh, mid one move forward. Jump the gun a little bit. Ace still has that spin. This is the thing, the Jug is a very hard kill, so if you just ignore him and take all his towers, eventually he has to come back to you. Yeah, and it, the Jug is not is not off to the kind of farm lead where he's oh, the toss back. you have to deal with. They found 33, he's gonna get Phantasm out now, now the Ignis does get dropped on the free heroes, Perfect. they're gonna try and move away, Nisha does get out of it. Still locking one in place, Puppy trying to run for the high hill in the meantime, they have lost Zai, and there is the freezing oh, for the to get away, and BBD, so scared of it, had to nightmare himself just to make sure he didn't die. Yeah, she, gets one, hey, she gets one shot there if she if she tries to get that freezing field off in the past. Yep. Instead, yeah, you're getting a preview tech. of what's going to happen once she has a glimmer cape. Because if she does, then you don't have a sentry at the ready. That's three heroes that would have died there. Yeah, meanwhile, it, you, you look at this 4K net worth advantage on the side of NIP and you say, okay, well, they you know, they got to be feeling good about the game. But then you realize that's the same advantage that they had 10 minutes ago. They haven't been able to capitalize. And keep in mind that they did go for a Midas on that Chaos Knight as well. Yes, yeah. there is one on the other side, but that's, at the same time, you were escalating. When you think about how that fight went down and what you got out of it. I mean, you got two kills, yes. They weren't exactly big prime kills, though. And instead, you threw out the Phantasm. You threw out the Ignis. It was expensive. Every time you do that, it just frees up the map for Secret to just roam around a little more freely and farm a little bit more aggressively. Uh, at the same time, Secret are approaching this window where they're going to have to start being a lot more aggressive because, you know... Nisha has pivoted from the early Midas into this Deso S and Y build. He's gonna be he's gonna be looking to mix it up here. That's true. At the same time, you do see mid one dip in towards yeah, the that radius. It's gonna now. come out from him. Okay, this is back to the kind of farm distribution that I expected to see during the draft. And again, I think it, it's super important as a tier one team that you're able to kind of adjust farm priority on the on the fly, depending on game flow. Puppy. He's feeling like he's on top of the world right now with his freezing build. Yeah, I know. Still, Every an armor. <laughs> you know. Well, everyone seems a little bit scared of him as well, so he'll just move aggressively to D-Ward. Oh, he didn't actually spot the, uh, the ops, though. Whoops. That would a nice info to have. See, the three secret cores, meanwhile, all moving toward that bottom lane. Not exactly the best way to go farming. Maybe if you can find I heroes, but part is out. This. Oh, that, that, wow. A little bit closer than you'd like, but he just get away, say. Poppy. Uh oh, Ace is on a kiss chase, but his days ha uh, his date robber has bailed out on him. Pretty tough. And the replacement date is quite a uh, a butch lass. Needs to just scaring him away a little bit. Decides not to commit. They haven't got the means to lock him down or chase on through. So far, Ace has been kind of left to his own devices to farm where he wants and do what he wants. Problem is, half the time what he wants to do is kill people. And, well, they're usually too tanky to do that. Yeah, this is this is where it starts to come out that you just don't have much to deal with this drug split push. And Secret wants to fight right now. They've got the S and Y on their life stealer. They might be forced to. There's a smoke movement. Hex is going to come out pretty damn early. Nisha's already be able to get away. Puppy nice going to be dragged in. But no, they threw up the toss through. Now, freezing field in the by the English Fathers. It's going to go to work with the Phantasm. Gets one kill. Nisha forced to fight, but locked in place. Needs to get out of it. Omisash is going to come out of Yapsaw alone. Tries to move across to his team. Mid one. Tries to juke it out. We'll be able to do some remnant away. 
They force the buyback out of the CM. They do lose the life steal as well. And they might lose more. Zai is stuck here. He can't move away. Quick enough to surge. A little bit too late. Avalanche is going to be there. Kel's not getting low. Not low enough. They're going to chase forward. Puppy in a little bit of trouble. Fada is going to heal up 33. They won't dive the base, but they do get a lot of kills out of that. Three dead on the side of Secret with one buying back. Yeah, a good chunk of that is that Fata got the level four Nether Ward down there on the high ground before the fight even began. So when CM got to her spell combo, she just got eaten alive by the Nether Ward damage, and the 10 armor didn't matter. They were able to get rid of her early on. It looked like it might not be too bad, but the Avalanche interrupting the life drain almost instantly. But Saxa, he placed that perfectly. The Ignis ruined everything. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the COD ulti was great, and it's, it's just always... Secret were kind of backing there. They were the ones that were trying to reset to take a fight and go on the aggressive. And I, the timing of that NIP move was just right. Because I think if Secret are able to set up and come into them, that's potentially a very different fight. But being able to take it on the high ground there, just, you know, 30 seconds earlier than Secret expected. That's the decisive angle. And as a result, ninjas do finally manage to increase that net worth lead now up to the 8,000, 9,000k mark. <laughs> Too shabby, the 25 9,000k, that's a lot, man. 9,000k, I know, right? My, my maths has turned pretty NA on me in the last few moments. Oh, wow. We, we really going to do that? We going to go, we're going to go EU versus NA? Oh, Chad, have fun. <laughs> hey, I'll have you know there's a majority of Europeans in this lobby, okay? My boy Sniff, he supports the numbers as well. I hear they don't lie. Oh, mm. oh, oh, oh. All right. Let's look at the progression here because still an issue, I think, on the side of Seeker, especially after that last fight. Uh, that mid one, he's he's been okay after a pretty rough start, but he's starting to look awfully poor. And that's a big item right there. That is a huge item for the Chaos Knight. Part of Tarask up. This is an offlane Chaos Knight, by the way, guys. Just keep yeah. that in mind. This isn't your your boss one getting a 27 minute heart plus armlet. This is your offlane. And yeah. mid one is nowhere near to contest this, right? Like, he needs to be the counter later on to this Chaos Knight, but he's not even going for a battle fury. He's got the Maelstrom, and he'll be going towards the Lincolns next. Rough tidings. They just keep trying to shove in this mid lane and credit to ninjas where credit is due. Keeping this tier one alive in the mid at 27 minutes in mm -hmm. is crucial to ensuring there's no opportunity to ever try and sneak in by secret. Well, that's that's the difference, right? Is that NIP can set up and make a move like that last fight on the dire side of the map because of the presence of that mid tier one. Secret can't do the same. They can't set up and go into nip on an unexpected timing. They might go into ace though. Problem is he does have a TP to get out. They have no way of stopping it. Yeah, I, they, they can't stop spin TP. It's the issue that we talked about from the very beginning. And they won't have any means to anytime soon either. You look at the life still yeah, no abyssal plan. No hex builder. I mean you can't you can't get something that's just gonna instant initiate on him. I guess Darkseer can build it eventually, but maybe Poppy eventually as well with the, the oh. hundred and fifty GPM talent. <laughs> true, true. All right. That's, Might uh, finally allow him to get his glimmer cape as well. Yeah, uh, he's not he's not far from level fifteen. Why he's farming in the jungle by himself? But guys, I don't want to be a liability, but I do want to have some XP. And these ganks are not working. Oh, mid one in the bot lane. Looking on the farther here. X is gonna come out though. Life drain instantly cancelled as he realizes it's a bad idea. But Siri chains will lock him in place. All the remnants committed to ensure the kill. Go. And well, definitely big. Look at the gold swing. Oh yeah, he thousand needed gold. That so bad. Oh my god. Ends the kill streak there. That's the springboard that that ember has needed for so long. Now the bot lane will push in. Someone has to go and address that. They might even hang around and try and punish whoever arrives. That mid tier one tower needs to die somehow. Mid one's moving in now. He was uh, trying to scout out for the slide up the bomb. He's got 33 if he wants him. Question is, who does want Yapso right now? Oh, and, and and NIP do not know where Secret is. No, they don't. Instead, they push on the base of the top lane. Ace is going to be interrupted by Yapso. Omni Slash comes out. Whoops. Well, he at least forces Ace a little bit deeper, but Ace can easily escape now. 
Now I smoked up. They're moving in now. But the problem is you can just TP out. Right. Spin and TP. They have just nothing to stop that. I mean, Ace can be all over their base all game long. And that's the thing. You can pressure and them until they respond to you every time as well. You don't have to be very careful not to go too deep. And with the tiny down, they're just going to pressure the roast, the roast pit. This is going to be I... a tough contest. I don't think they're quick enough, though. It's going to be close if they keep getting reluctant. Uh oh, Poppy. Yeah. In trouble. We'll pull here. And now death for 70 seconds. It doesn't matter seconds. how fast you are when when you can win a fight. That's true. And they're still holding on the Phantasm all along. This should be an Aegis for... I assume A is. 33 oh, shouldn't sure. need it with a heart now. No, 33 is. is unkillable. Mid one has switched it up. Identified that there's no way a Lincoln gets you back in this game. He's going to go for the Octarine core instead. Wow. I still feel like you just try and turtle down with a Battle Fury. Yeah, I was wondering at some point, once you see that the CK already has hard up, you know, you're going to need a way to deal with those illusions eventually. I'm not sure Octarine's going to get you there. Most definitely will not. Mid one just farm the creep wave to try and stop Honestly? them from pushing. Honestly, what you need is you need an Abyssal on Lifestealer. And he's, he's going for a Slope Keras, which is, yeah, you can't really criticize him for, but they have to have a way to deal with this Jug. Yeah, I mean, in this type of or game with the amount of really right click they have, I get why he's doing it. Bane in the bot lane. Mid one very slowly trying to kill him. Maybe we'll finally be able to get it, but well... <laughs> PVD wastes a lot of the time because in their base they've already lost the town. Now they might lose the hero. Hex does get life stealer away. Back to him building for the rest of NIP. 33. Phantasm's off. Turns around. Oh, Nishat's back away. Now they're dragging Yasuo. Avalanche comes out. There's the freezing food as well. But they're too far away. And Ignis drags him in. 33 re engages. Poppy. Gonna get low. Crimson Scar protects but not for long. The Omni Slash coming out. What will kill off one? Might kill off more. They're gonna push them back. Further away from safety. Nisha locked in place with the double Ignis. No. They're gonna melt straight through them. Buyback comes out from Zai. Problem is, they are not leaving your base anytime soon, even with that buyback. And a bigger problem, Lifestealer does not have a way back into this. They might just go for the second lane, they'll realize this in a second. And it just became obvious. Back to the base. To hit more buildings. Lanes are pushed in, but PPD's back in the base to deal with that. Mm. Yeah, so trying to make a move. Yeah. He's in trouble. Gonna try and get away with the surge. We'll be able to do so. Crimson Guard will slow them down. But, well, one thing to say is slow down. You will never say stop, though. Two lanes cleaned up by NIP. Now up to a 30,000 net worth lead. Yeah, and, and mid one furiously cutting ways to try and protect against Megas, but you can see the drawings that are coming out of the mini map. Yeah, they, they're just gonna call it. I think that's, I think that's the right decision. You're not coming back into this game. I, I, again, the, I really the decisive thing there was NIP's ability to get onto the dire side of the map to take that big engagement uh, on from the high ground in the dire's own.